All right, guys, welcome back. So uh, we have some Predator armor that we're testing. Um, this will be the panel that we shoot uh, later in the video. So next time we see this panel, it will be disgusting. Uh, the dimensions on this panel, um, real quick, let's let's kind of go out and just talk about this. Um, I know one of the guys who works with Predator armor, his name is Cole. Um, he's a fantastic dude. He shoots long range, part of the long range uh, podcast, long LRA, uh, long, or no, LRT, I'm sorry, long range tactics podcast. So. Uh, Cole and his team sent this out for review, so we're going to shoot it. This has been a pretty sweet panel. Um, I have carried it in my backpack for the last couple weeks. It's not too bad at all. Um, it's it's a really sweet little panel. I feel a lot safer with something like this in my backpack. Um, cool part is it only it only costs 125 bucks. This is a level three rated plate. Um, this is not level three certified. This has been. Uh, independently tested in a laboratory certified to meet NIJ level 3A specifications, which means it will stop 357 SIG FMJ as well as 44 mag SJHP. So I think it's soft jacketed hollow points. Um, it's a backpack panel, so it's really slim, like ultra slim. Um, it is uh, 10 inches, 10.5 inches by 14 inches. Uh, it's multi hit rated. It's nylon ripstop outer layer with a uh, Kevlar hybrid. I don't know what else you would call it. Uh, Kevlar, it's called Kevlar Hybrid is what it says. Uh, it's 100% made in the U USA and it is 1.4 pounds. Uh, I'm not gonna put on the scale. Uh, every scale is different. It might weigh 1.4 pounds to me. It might not weigh 1.4 pounds um, on whatever scale I put it on. But yeah, it's a pretty lightweight panel, pretty awesome. So I'm gonna kind of mark out six sections on here. We're gonna shoot it with 22, we're gonna shoot it with 32, we're gonna shoot it with nine millimeter, 45, 357, and then we're gonna send a 5.56 round through it just to see if it'll stop that. So we'll, we'll do that. I figured multi-hit rated means that we could section it up into six little parts. And we can send some rounds through it and see what happens. I gotta kind of rig up something, a way to, you know, put it up somewhere, but <laughs> it looks like it will be a decent thing to to do. Uh, I, you know, there's not a whole lot that, you know, we can test with this other than um, can we shoot it and a few other things. So we're going to go shoot it tomorrow. We're going to see how it holds up. They did send this out for review, so I can't, you know, I cannot tell you what that means, uh, but this is a pretty sweet panel. I really like stuff like this. Like I really like that companies send stuff like this out and I think that's pretty awesome of them. So um, head on over to Predator Armor. I will have a link um, in my link tree. Uh, if you go to my link tree, you'll see Predator Armor there and it will be awesome. Actually, since this is not a gun company, I can link this in the description down below so you can go check that out. I will see if I can get a discount code of some sort um, and put it in there. I know it won't be a, like a sole discount code for me, but I'll see if I can get you guys like 5% or 10% off something. Um, if you buy Predator Armor or anything like that. They have all sorts of stuff. I don't recommend their steel plates. I'm going to be bluntly honest. Um, I don't like steel plates. I think steel plates are not... Uh, if you're in a pinch and you just need armor, sure, grab some steel plates. But I highly recommend some Hescos or some things like that. But um, the soft armor is something that I always recommend. I think level 3A soft armor is fantastic. Um, sometimes you can even get some really thin uh, level 4 stuff. Um, that's soft armor too. Or maybe not soft armor, but it's like a, it's not steel and ceramic. So, uh, but I really love this stuff. I think it's pretty sweet. So we'll take this out to the range. Uh, you'll guys see this uh, here in just a few seconds. So <laughs> off to the range with us. All right, guys, uh, we're out here testing the Predator 3A body armor. Uh, I am a professional or at least semi. Um, so let's, you know, be safe out here on the range. Just understand for the YouTube moderators out there. Um, I, I do know what I'm doing. We are testing this on a safe range. As you can tell, this is a very safe range. Um, we are down, there's a backstop, all the fun stuff, and we're shooting at body armor. So if you're out here uh, and you're upset at what we're doing, um, this will hopefully save people's lives and I hope you understand that. All right, so we're out here today testing our Predator armor. This is the 3A+. Plus. I have two different 22 rounds here. So we have the mini mags and we have the yellow jacket. These are Remington yellow jackets. Uh, they're really cool. Uh, they don't feed out of this 22 very well. This is the California edition. I don't live there anymore, but uh, let's test some armor real quick. I believe this is fire. I don't know. I've never, I don't shoot this gun very often. Top right corner. All right, let's go take a look.
All right, so it appears that we did not go through, but it caused a significant amount of damage on the back end. Uh, the bullet, you can feel it in there, but let's get back. Let's do the other one. I think the other one actually would be pretty cool. All right, so that was the CCI Mini Mag. This will be the Remington Yellow Jacket. This one sucks too, so I'm gonna put it right next to that one, hopefully. All right. <clears throat> So this is our first round. This is our second round. You can see we back force, back, back place, back face defamation. So uh, it's not too bad. It's a decent little round, but you know, it's 3A. Uh, we are going to destroy this by the end. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's go get the 32. <clears throat> All right, so we have the 32 auto 60 grain silver tip. This is out of my uh, hilarious Davis Industries. Um, Fun, interesting fact about this gun. My dad picked this gun up for my mom back in the 90s. Um, it is a huge hunk of crap. Uh, let's put that on safe real quick. Uh, it is a Davis Industries made in uh, Chino, California. About, I believe it was in the either late 80s or early 90s. But it is a hilarious gun to shoot. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that uh, right now. So we're gonna, just gonna pop around in that top left area. We are safe. Okay. So, with the 32, you can feel right in there. I mean, you can feel the bullet in there. Later, when we're done with all this, we'll cut this open and we'll look through here and we'll see all the damage done by the bullets. But I actually have to go get my staple gun now so we can put it back up and uh, have some more hilarity. All right, guys. So, this is the 124 grain Federal Punch. Uh, this is my personal protection round that I use. Um, I carry this every day. I am an ATM technician, so, you know, come at me if you want. We'll see exactly what this does to the body armor right now. I'm shooting this out of an M&P 2.0 compact. I didn't want to bring out my full-size Glock 17, plus I haven't had it zeroed. This gun zeroed, and I really like this gun. So let's uh, go ahead and plant one right below the 22 on the right-hand side. All right. All right, so as you can see, we have a round right deep in there. I mean, that's the hole, it's entry hole. Um, it was, as you can tell, pretty gnarly right there. I think that we did a pretty good job at shooting that. So uh, we'll go back and we'll test the other one real quick. All right, so this is the 124 grain SMB. Now this is a uh, full metal jacket. I'm sorry about the firing range. We are in a live range. Um, this is a uh, SMB full metal jacket. I'm gonna shoot it out of my M&P 2.0. This has a four inch barrel, by the way, if you're wondering. So this is a four inch barreled gun. Not the 3.6, not the 4.2 but a straight up four inch barrel. We're gonna shoot it right next to where we shot the uh, previous round. All right, we're safe. <clears throat> All right, so as you can tell, I do believe we have two rounds in there. I'll have to cut this open here in a little bit, but this is woven Kevlar. But yeah, you can see right where we patched that, punched that other one. This is gonna actually hold up pretty well. Uh, next, we're gonna shoot 45. I'm gonna actually turn the plate around. We're gonna shoot 45 because there is a wood post right here. I'd like to keep that back there. So um, we're gonna shoot 45 right here. All right, guys, so we're shooting some uh, really insane 45 hollow points here. Now this is into armor, so 45 hollow points have a tendency to expand really well. Um, but we're gonna shoot this into this armor. Um, these firearms were donated by my friend Tim to the channel. He is a pretty awesome guy. I really like him. Uh, and he's got a bunch of cool guns. So we have a Colt government model, 1911. I couldn't tell you the barrel length. All I can tell you is that a bunch of FUDs probably shot this back in the day. Uh, we're gonna snap this one right into that right side of the target right there. All right, we are safe. All right, this is a pretty chunky dude right here. All right, so I don't remember where, right here. So we turned the target upside down, but a 45 go right in there. It did not come out the back. Um, this did split the back of the body armor, but I believe this was because we weren't shooting it into anything, but it, the bullet is still in there. You can feel it right in here, but for the 45, it's right there. Man, that's pretty cool at stopping that. <clears throat> All right, guys, so we have a 357 uh, out of this Protector Poly 357 Magnum. This is a Taurus. Uh, it's an okay shooting gun, I guess. Um, but yeah, we did previously shoot the target, the top right-hand corner, to get this guy on sight. But uh, I, was, I did not hit the target where it was supposed to. So uh, we're going to try this one more time. This is a uh, 
Jacketed hollow point, 357. I think that's a pretty decent round. All right, I think we hit it. Okay, so that did go through. Uh, maybe. I think we hit it too close to the edge. I did hit it on the edge, so it did it did go through. So 357. All right, so guys, we have a 454 Casul out here. This is a Taurus something or other. Uh, as again, donated from Tim, but this is a 454 300 green XTP Magnum round. Uh, we're gonna send this one probably a little center. Um, but yeah, this is a big gun, uh, as you've probably seen. I'll roll in a, a reel of me doing this beforehand, but I did shoot this guy uh, before at a steel target. Let's hope I can still hit it. But we're just gonna go center mass right now, top center mass. <laughs> Was that the bullet? All right, so we smack this with the uh, 454. As you can tell, there is no bullet left in here. It is hotter than Satan, um, but that is right where that 454 round went. Uh, this is a pretty beefy plate. Um, now, I'm going to tell you guys right now, it broke the wood plate on the back. So there was a piece of wood here. You can see the wood down there. It done messed this guy up real bad. Um, but yeah, we sent the round back there somewhere. But uh, now we're just gonna shoot a 5.56 five, round straight through the center of this and see what happens. All right, so guys, we have an 85 green 5.56 five, OTM boat tail. This is a Barnes Precision Match. I'm gonna send this one straight through the bottom center of the plate um, because that's where I feel it has the most integrity right now. And I wanna see how well this round does. But as you can see, we have an open tip match. Uh, there's a bunch of wolf gold in the mag, but we're gonna put the open tip right there. This is a magazine length round, as you can tell. Shout out to Trajectory Arms. They built this upper. This is a 13.9 Sons of Liberty Gunworks barrel with a KE Arms upper. I have a Midwest Industries rail aim point, guys, the charging handle all the fun stuff. And then shout out to Ape Defense for the cool multi-cam furniture on my rifle. Uh, they are pretty awesome. Uh, you can actually head on over there. Uh, I think it's like 135 bucks for the set. I think it's pretty sweet and it holds up better than the actual um, B5 one that comes from B5. So there we go. We're gonna send this 5.56 round straight through. And... All right, so there's the 5.56 five, round, and I believe it did go straight through. So this is an 85 grain open tip match round. Should be able to actually find it down here. It's probably right in there somewhere. Uh, we probably won't be able to dig up the dirt, but I thought that was actually a pretty sweet round. Uh, and then let's send a wolf gold just right below it. We'll see what happens with wolf gold here. I believe that also went through. <laughs> but yeah, five, five, six rounds are going through. And then we're gonna take a nine millimeter and we're gonna punch it through the same spot and see how well it held up after all that abuse. Because we do know that uh, it did go through a bunch of crap right there. So we have my Glock 43X. I have some just range, nine millimeter. We're gonna just send it center mass. All right. Our nine millimeter. I don't think I don't think our nine millimeter came out. I think it's still. I can't tell where it went. But let's go tear this plate open and see what's inside. Um, so we have some. What looks like that looks like the big boy there. This guy looks like the forty-five. <clears throat> so this looks like the forty-five. That shroomed out pretty nicely. I think this was the, this is a nine millimeter, I believe. Yeah, this is the federal punch. So the punch has a P at the back. Um, that's really the only way I think you can tell. Um, but yeah, this is a, this actually didn't expand the way I thought it would. I'm actually really surprised at that. Um, now I believe we still have some stuff in here. So this is one of the nine mil rounds. This is one I sent in the center. This was 
Uh, this is this is still hot, actually. Ow. Um, but yes, so it appears that it actually did stop the center punch 9mm round that we did at the end. Uh, I didn't know that it did that, actually. So that's pretty sweet. Um, there is a ton of layers here. It looks like we have one, two, three, four... So we have four Kevlar, and then I believe this is their hybrid layer. This is a Kevlar Roven with something else. I believe this is what makes it 3A compliant. Um, but yeah, you can see we sent that 5.56 round straight through there, and the 223 round also went straight through. Those are very high velocity rounds coming out of a 13.9 inch barrel, so I do not think that they are going to get stopped um, very easily, but there are plenty of layers here um, to stop certain things, and I believe that's it. Um, I don't know if we have actually any more bullets left in this guy. I'm going to try to, we had some that fell on the ground. I'm going to try to retrieve those here in a moment. All right. So guys, this is a, this is a pretty sweet plate. As we can tell this shot, uh, through, uh, 22 and 32, we shot some nine millimeters. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, Federal Punch. Uh, I believe this was the Cellar and Bellet 124 grain. I believe this is the 38, uh, but I can't really tell. This may have just been another nine millimeter round. I have no idea, but we did have a lot of fun with it. Um, I hope to get more tests, more plates in the future. I'm actually going to contact these guys and see if they can send out another one because um, I want to actually send that 454 round just straight center punch that 454 round through here to see if it works. And then I want to send a straight, um, like a maybe a 300 blackout round or something like that. Maybe we can get one of those. Um, I believe this armor is a lot stronger than my test here showed um, i want to prove that to you guys so i think this is pretty sweet um, let me know what you guys think about this and uh, i'm sorry about the ridiculous uh range noise in the background but thank you guys so much for tuning in we're gonna head back to the bench right now all right guys so as we saw there and getting kevlar all over my office um this actually held up pretty well um i'm not gonna ding it for the 357 stuff coming out of the side here specifically due to the fact that I think I'd already shot it too many times, moved too much Kevlar out of the way for it to actually be effective. I have spoken with somebody over there at Predator Armor. We'll get another one out to test. I will send some 357 rounds straight through the center of this guy um, and have it not like be weak. Uh, I think that would be something that's pretty ingenious or maybe get some Underwood ammo, some of that super penetrator stuff and see what that does with some of the stuff. Cause I'm really interested to see like how well this armor, this armor held up really well. I was actually extremely surprised uh, at, at how much abuse it did take. So this, this took a lot of crap. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the Kevlar and hybrid thing that happened there. And I hope you guys are too. Again, tell me your thoughts below. I mean, this is just a level three, a plate. This is not or maybe three plus, I can't remember what it is, but it's just a level three um, soft armor. It's not meant to stop the world, but I'm pretty sure it stopped a hell of a lot of stuff that you would you would want it to stop, especially if you had this in your backpack. Um, tell me what your comments are down below. I know you're going to sit here and tell me you either A, don't like it, or B, you just think that it's not good enough. That's completely understandable. Um, I think that if I were going to carry this, this would be good b behind my laptop. You know, like granted, it's not going to stop my laptop from dying, but it's going to be pretty cool. So another couple things I wanted to talk about here. We have the SCT-19 frame. I think that this is going to be something that's pretty cool. Uh, I, uh, I'm i looking at building this out already. I have the upper parts kit. I need to get a slide and some other stuff. A Geisley Super Duty uh, receiver set. Um, I, you know, I like OD Green Anno and... Uh, with brown owls, um, they carry this. So I thought it was actually pretty cool. You can usually pick these up on the regular. They go out of stock randomly and then they'll just come right back into stock. So um, if you want to go pick up a OD Green receiver set, you can head on over to brown owls and get that done also. So huge shout out to brown owls for the SAT19 frame and huge shout out to brown owls for the Geisley receiver set. I think this is a great receiver set. It's going to go pretty awesome with all the stuff that I have to put in here. So thank you guys so much for tuning into the bench as always. I hope you guys have a good one.